continue to give Oklahoma this field position, Charles? Now, this field position is, is what has Texas Tech back on their heels. An excellent defensive series last time for Texas Tech. Got a big hit in. That will help them with the emotion. But when you continue to give up this kind of field position, you're putting yourselves in, you're putting your team in jeopardy <laughs> with a good offensive team such as Oklahoma. You're putting too much pressure on your defense, you think. Yeah, this early in the ball game, they haven't had a chance to catch their breath yet. And the flat to Griffin. And again, he's picking up yardage and chunks over the 45, down about the 43-yard line. Here's Aaron Andrews. Okay, Ron, well, you and Charles were talking a little bit about Wes Walker. He's become the team's most versatile player. He's got quite a fan club. His own quarterback, Cliff Kingsbury, made a comment. He makes all these plays look like he should be drinking beer at a frat party. And his own coach referred to him as the big fat rooster from Bugs Bunny, you know, Foghorn Leghorn. He says if you give him a stack of boards to build a house, he'll put it together and give you a mansion. Yeah, talk about Henry the Chicken Hawk. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you right. know who always hung out with Foghorn Leghorn. And Henry was one of those guys who got it done. And Wes Walker, you know, uh, Coach Bleach meant that as a compliment for That's Wes right. Walker. Well, this time, Adel Duckett upends Kiwan Jones. That'll bring up a third down. They lose a yard. It'll be third down and three for the Sooners. Again, another big third down, and this is something we talked about with Greg McMacken, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech. Third down efficiency early in the season. It wasn't there for Tech's defense. Over the last eight games, they've only given up 31% on third down. They need this big right now. As you see, you see Oklahoma on third down, they've improved as the season has gone on. Double rolling left, looking into the flat. Pass is complete. Short of the first down. Now he gets the first down. Trey Smith, arguably the best tight end in college football. Here is a young man that was a main target as far as receiving last year. This year, the numbers are down, but he's become more of a complete player. Take a look at our All-State replay as All-State gives us the, the camera view from the goalpost. Here's the problem. A missed tackle. Joselio Hansen, number 12, had him on the spot short of the first down. Oh, that's the difference in the game right now. Oklahoma's making those tackles, keeping mm -hmm. them short of the first down. Texas Tech is not. That was a missed opportunity for the Red Raiders. I want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You are in good hands with Allstate. Play action for Hibble. Going down deep. Pass. Intercepted. Ricky Saylor. His second of the year, the senior from Tampa, Florida. That looked like somebody didn't read the pattern correctly. Hibble was thrown to an area and his receiver never got there. Well, I think that he had the receiver and I think the ball sailed on him to Ricky Saylor. You see, mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> He's got a guy open, Mark Clayton. Ball's just overthrown. Ricky Saylor, the beneficiary. Texas Tech does not care that they truly didn't quote unquote make the play, but they ended up with a great opportunity here. They shut down Oklahoma again. Nate Hibble knows that that interception is on him. We see Greg McMacken exhorting his troops on the sidelines. Texas Tech has got to take advantage of this opportunity. Down 14-0 in the first. Trips to the wide side of the field, Ron. Kingsbury pressured. Trying to make something. He's in big trouble. Throws it to no one. And if they call intentional grounding, it's a safety. Boy, he was not outside the tackles. It was close. It appears he got away with one there. Take a look at the pressure, though. Here they come, right in the middle. Lance Mitchell, number 10, flushes him early. Kingsbury gets rid of it as he takes the big hit from Jonathan Jackson. Late in the play, ball was incomplete. Mike Leach, a little confused right now about what, what his team is doing. But one thing about Mike Leach, he knows his team has been in this spot before, and he will not let them panic. Numbers on Kingsbury. Four first down attempts tonight. They have not gotten a yard on first down so far. Looks like they're going to drop this time. They throw the little screen. Oklahoma reads it. Henderson trying to get away. Penalty flag is thrown. This is so much a part of this Texas Tech offense. They throw so many different screens. Oklahoma very concerned about it coming into the game. And what Oklahoma did on that one was drop to seven and rush four, but they used their strong safety, Eric Bassey, number 13. And there's going to be a legal block by Texas Tech, but they used him to run up into where the ball was coming, into the area. He hugged up a receiver is, what the, is the term. Went and found the receiver, hugged him up, and got there, and then ended up with, ended up with a penalty. 
forced the timing of the play to be chipped away yet again. There's Steve Juszczyk, one of the excellent Big 12 officials, a veteran crew here tonight. I think they'll settle back for field position because the defense is playing so well. Illegal block in the back on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. Boy, if you're Mike Leach, you have to be a little concerned right now. You've seen this Oklahoma pressure. Now you're get pushed back a little bit. Right there was that was it right there. And you see 75 holding on. See right there on Bassey, number 13. They really had their choice of two on that one. A block yeah. in the back as well as a hold. What Mike Leach has to find is a quick hitting play that uses Oklahoma speed against them. In other words, try and get flow one way, go back the other, but it has to be quick and it has to be, you know, they have to get there right now. They can't continue to hold on to the football on deeper, deep breaking patterns because it appears the rush is getting to Kingsbury early. You can see Texas Tech 19 total yards. They average almost 504. That's fourth best in the country. Now they face second down and 17. Oklahoma showing only a three-man rush. It's a lot of people that they're going to use with their speed to cover, and here they come with the blitz they anyway. Kingsbury over the middle, pass, drop. Should have been caught intended for Mickey Peters, the junior out of Weatherford, Texas. And when you have trouble making plays, when you have an opportunity to make one, you have to. Watch as the ball goes. Watch Peters. He's right in the middle, wide open. In other words, the coaches are going to say, you have to catch that one mm -hmm. because we have to find a way to slow down their pressure. If you don't catch the ball, it just makes Oklahoma bolder on defense. Now facing third and 17, the Sooner defense can tee off on Kingsbury. They're showing it. They may drop off on this one, and they do. They only bring three. Kingsbury still has some time. Plenty of time looking. Plenty of time. My goodness. Now he's in trouble and he is going to be dropped. Jimmy Wilkerson. You would think the senior quarterback would know better and throw the football away. Kingsbury was not able to do it. This is the ultimate coverage sack. How long does Cliff Kingsbury have to find someone? We saw the tail end there where Jimmy Wilkerson ends up getting the safety for Oklahoma. But the secondary coverage was incredible. Great call by Mike Stooch and Brent Venables. The play before, they showed they showed dropping seven. Instead, they blitz. This time, they showed blitz, dropped seven, and the coverage was all over everyone. Find someone open. Who's open? See Mitchell, number 10. He's covering someone right there. There's Bassey, 13. Who's open? There is no one open, nowhere for Cliff Kingsbury to go with the football. That And the time just kept ticking, ticking, ticking. There's still no one open. Here's Craig Sager. Further on that secondary coverage, remember earlier, Ron, you mentioned that Brandon Everidge was going into the locker room. His right shoulder has been popping out several times the past couple of weeks. They popped it back in. He came over on the sidelines, and just before that play, he said, I got to get out there. He was one of those that was in on that great coverage after coming out of the locker room. Boy, he's a trooper, Sags. But you know what you didn't see on that replay? I didn't see a whole lot of receivers coming back to the football. Excellent point. People have to work their way back towards the quarterback and make themselves available for a pass. It's almost as if they get to get become a little bit discouraged by the coverage that they've had early. You've got to continue to work your way free. Someone has to come open. What was the old adage? When a quarterback has that much time to throw the ball, he's right. going to find someone open because they can't cover that long. That's right. <laughs> o Oklahoma made <laughs> Oklahoma says that adage holds no water here in Norman. <laughs> That's right. Now we got Fagans. Fagan and Perkins back. Greyhouse kick. Bad punt. Bad punt. Oh, Gets a nice roll. roll. <laughs> but again, Oklahoma with good field position. The big game of the day was Ohio State and Michigan. Here's Ernie with the highlights. Thank you, Ron. In case somehow this escaped you, this is how Ohio State sewed up its game against Michigan. Will Allen with the pick on the last play of the game. Ohio State 14 to 9. They are Fiesta Bowl bound to play for the national championship. Will it be Miami if the Hurricanes win their last two? If not, who knows? Back to you, Ron. You know, Ernie, I think all Big 12 coaches and SEC coaches right now are saying, wait a minute, you guys got to play a conference championship game. You don't get in that easy. Yeah, they, they would love to see them all play conference championship games because that extra game always leaves you in jeopardy. 
You know, as we take a look now at the BCS, Miami won Thursday night against Pittsburgh. Ohio State has sewed up their spot in the Fiesta Bowl. Miami has Syracuse at Syracuse this week and finishes up with Virginia Tech at home on December the 7th. They win both, they go. But otherwise, is it Washington State? Is it Oklahoma? If both of them win out, we'll see what the numbers spit out at us. Well, the numbers right now are 16 to nothing, Oklahoma in the first quarter. Trent Smith, the tight end, dancing around in the backfield. Oh, you keep it on the ground, Griffin. Gets into Red Raider territory, down about the 47-yard line. Lamont Anderson, the senior out of Irving, Texas, with his first tackle of the night.